Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of the um, Agent Breakdown series that we're doing here on the channel. Uh, today is the very start of the Battle Pass Chapter 2. It's August 4th. You can see with the release of the second chapter, we actually got the newest agent in the game as well, which is Killjoy. A German Sentinel is the role that she plays. So we're going to dive into an Ascent match. We're going to show off all of her abilities and see if there's some little uh, tips and tricks you can know about how to play her most efficiently. Don't worry, team. If you die, I have your memories backed up at base. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> or am I? My ultimate is ready. All right. So if we look at our abilities real quick, let me go ahead and pause the timer real, real fast. Look at the buy mini. We got a nano storm, which is her C ability, alarm bot, which is her Q ability, and then turret, which is her E. So let's look at each of those individually. Nano storm says equip a nano storm grenade, fire to throw it. Upon landing, it goes covert, meaning invisible, kind of like uh, Cypher's tripwires. Activate the nano storm to deploy a damaging swarm of nanobots. And we're going to go ahead and look at both sides of the all of these abilities too. On the second half, we're going to see what it looks like to be on the receiving end. Alarm bot says equip a covert alarm bot. Fire to deploy a bot that hunts down enemies that get in range. After reaching its target, the bot explodes, dealing damage and applying vulnerable. Hold equip to recall a deployed bot. Vulnerable is also something that we see on um, Viper in her little poison puddle that she leaves on the ground. It basically just means that you take double damage when you are vulnerable. Equip a turret, which is her E ability. Uh, fire to deploy turret that fires at enemies in a 180 degrees cone. Hold equip to recall the deployed turret. So let's just fake buy some stuff here. Unpause the match timer. And so we're going to test all of our abilities right here in this little courtyard area. So I'm going to go ahead and move our opposing uh, or our opponent bot into place. So yeah, um... And then we're going to look at her ultimate two, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. But it basically it's just like a big disarm effect. You can see it here. It's kind of what it looks like. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to move our jet bot into place over here. And we're going to test all the abilities out on her. And so what I need to do real quick is turn on the infinite or the respawns as well. There we go. Alright, so first up we're going to try the Nanobot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy it over here. For one. So you can see... I'm going to stay away from it for a second. You can see that no matter where you are as Killjoy, much like Cypher's cages, you can detonate it from anywhere. You just got to look at it and press F. Upon if, if you get close enough, you can also hear... got a pretty unique sound effect that, that it makes just like cypher uh, tripwires as well and so what we're going to go ahead and do is just deploy this without anybody in it you can see it's a totally beautiful effect excellent colors let me go ahead and pause the timer again excellent colors i really like all the colors that are going on in killjoy's um you know model and abilities um let's go ahead and see if we can see what the damage looks like as well See if I stand in it, you know, it's taking about three per tick. Well, I had armor on as well. Let's try it without armor. Okay, so about five per tick. I'm going to throw it under jet, and I'll look on my other screen, see if we can get about the same ability. It's actually significantly higher on an enemy. It's about 15 per tick. Oh, I got to unpause match timer. Yeah, so it's about 15 per tick. Again, I'm going to show that from the other side as well. I just wanted to test it real quick while we uh, while we had it up. Oh, do I have to attach legs to the spike now? <laughs> it's a funny little... Uh, little quip. Don't overthink it. That's my job. All right, so yeah, something that you really need to notice about um, Killjoy that we're seeing from her, at least her first just nano swarm ability, is she's very good at holding positions. You know, she is she was given the sentinel tag, 
but she's also pretty good at um, kind of faking your opponents out. And what I mean by that, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the alarm bite. You can see the casting range here. I'm going to toss that there. It goes covert as well. Has the same sort of humming noise. Now, if I'm on attack, which I am right now, and I've already pushed onto site, you can see I can actually see where my bot is from here. And I can actually just hold off that flank. You can see the bot's right there. That was the spike I was looking at earlier. Bot's right there. So I, I know that I'm holding off that angle. Maybe it would be a little bit better to demonstrate like this. I don't want to get jet in it quite yet. Set it right there. So I know that this pathway is cut off. Now I have to, the, the thing that sucks about Killjoy is there's no indicator like where the spike is to show you where it is, but you can see it on the mini map to say, okay, I have that area covered. Let's say you're getting plant down and maybe you have an ally that moves into this, this room right here. You can also see if you just pull it like that, there's a little indicator ability over your Q, which you hold down to recall the bot. And there isn't a distance or anything that calls that bot back to you. You just need to hold down the Q. But you can do it from anywhere. Maybe you decide to change up positions. Oh, let me get that back real quick. Which is a lot easier than recalling a lot of Cypher's abilities, in which case you need to like look at him. Like his his uh, camera you need to look at to recall. His tripwires need to be looking at. You need to you know walk up on him and get them to recall them. So let's go ahead and use the alarm bot's ability. I'm going to stand right next to Jet so maybe we can see what the damage is like. So you can see it marks me as vulnerable. It doesn't actually deal damage to Jet either. I just made her vulnerable as well. That's what that indicator was. So you can see it actually doesn't deploy right away. It actually has to go covert before it deploys. You know, that, that would have been when it would have gone uh, covert. But since somebody was in the range, it just deployed automatically. This is a little bit different than like... Um, raises boom bot in which case you can just set it down and it'll start rolling i mean immediately speed up towards that person if it sees someone right away and then we're going to try out uh her turret as well so notably the thing that you have to remember about uh killjoy's turret is that it's a 180 degree uh semicircle from the direction you're facing when you place it so this would be able to look at jet when i'm doing it like this and this would almost, or this would also be able to look at Jet because it's just to the left. You can see the little pink range indicator. But if you step up just like this, even though it looks like it's pretty close, it's actually not able to see Jet. And I mean, it's just barely right behind her. Now, if you hold E, you just recall it as well. Ah, that's it. Okay, good. I was wondering what that was doing. Uh, so you can see the right click indicator uh, it has a rotate thing. I thought it was going to be spinning like Sage's Wall, but it's not. It just flips at 180 degrees. So you can see it's facing away from me, and now it's facing towards me here like this. So you can actually face it or place it facing you as well, which is really good because, you know, if you're wanting to guard this angle, you can place it like this, or like this and it'll get that 180 degrees. Or, you know, maybe you're stuck stuck in here like this you don't want to place it right here because they um it blocks off the entire you know right side you could place it like that and get a good view on people coming in here as well so let's take a look at about how much damage it deals again we'll see this from the other side in just a moment Well, I tried to do it before I killed her. But each of the shots deals about 4 damage. So the 3 round burst that it does will deal about 12 damage. And you can see the turret just lasts sort of forever. And it's just going to it's just gonna gun down the area that you happen to place it on. So lastly, we're going to go ahead and use her ultimate real quick. See what the, uh, see what the visual effects look like. And then we'll swap over and see what, all, what it looks like to be on the receiving end of all of uh, Killjoy's abilities for, to round out the video. So yeah, Killjoy just got released. Uh, just got today. Battle Pass uh, second chapter just came out today as well. 
she's a really fun character i think she's really strong because of just the ability to recall a lot of her abilities and have them just sort of, she's like another another cypher with abilities that are a little bit more offensive and aren't just particularly scouting that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna have jet equip her gun her pistol here go ahead and pause the match timer we're gonna use this here So you can see there's a countdown on how long it takes. There's also a range to a certain point. Once it deploys, it actually just completely um, detains an enemy. They don't have anything they can do. I'm going to try and use... Oh, I should have tried to use Jet C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this a little bit further back. But basically... You can see Jet has her knife out now. It actually disarmed her as well and made it so that she um, wasn't wasn't able to even have a gun out at all. So we'll place it way back here. You can sort of see Jet's still standing still there. So you can see range is pretty big, but it, it doesn't just cover the entire map. So I'm going to have Jet just step in here real quick. I'm going to see if you can use abilities when you're detained. Alright, so Jet's currently detained right now. I'm hitting all of her abilities. She has, she is not able to hit anything. She's also extremely slow. You can see that she walked just a little bit before unlocking her, uh, or having her gun back in her hand. She was really slowed down. And it's just a huge pulse AoE that sort of counts down. Um, I believe after Killjoy would be killed as well. Let's try it. Yep, it still goes. It still goes. Alright. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to be on the receiving end of all of Killjoy's abilities. And we're going to see what that looks like for you as well. Alrighty, back here for the second half. Uh, we're going to be looking at being on the receiving end of all of Killjoy's abilities now. Same map, same sides. Uh, we're just going to be swapping into the, uh, the Jet's point of view. Also going to be testing some things like whether or not jet smoke blocks uh, turret vision, stuff like that. We'll see in just a moment. Alarm bot as well. But yeah, overall, Who am I kidding? You know you can't keep up. first impressions really make me think that Killjoy is going to be very good. Played a lot, about as much as like probably played a little bit more than Cypher is in just like casual games because of just the fact that she has some offensive capabilities doesn't feel completely weird to be playing her on like attack you know sometimes playing Cypher on attack a lot of the times it's like okay I'm gonna use my trip riders to cover a flank I'm gonna use my cage my my cages to get us into into a site and then you know I'm gonna sort of set up my camera to defend the bomb once it's planted All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is uh, Killjoy's Nano Swarm. So you can see that it got thrown down. I'll do it again real quick. Actually, I'm going to do it about right in front of where I'm standing already, just so you can sort of see how it gets thrown out and then immediately goes invisible. And you can see that I can hear it as well, sort of see it, from about that close as the opponent. And I believe it we're pretty close to being on the um, the edge of it. So I'm going to detonate the one that I'm actually standing right in front of on the other Killjoy screen. So yeah, I was actually just on the edge. And you can see it takes about 15 damage per tick. So you can see I can actually see it. And it is shootable. Okay, that is another thing that I was interested in testing. So, that means that Nano Swarm, first impression, is definitely going to be um, not an ability you just leave around like Cypher's Tripwire. It's going to be one of the things you're going to want to throw out and then sort of immediately deploy like Cypher's Cage. Let's go ahead and look at the um, Alarm Bot. I'm going to look over here where we're deploying it. So you can see it gets deployed and it goes away. It's got a little bit lo longer of an indicator. 
you can see it a lot further away as well. So again, this one doesn't deal damage. Okay. And you can... Okay, I, I don't know if I backed away. Back away backed away from it fast enough. So what we're going to do, I'm going to walk into its ranges jet, and then I'm going to backwards dash and see if you can escape the vulnerable area. You can. Okay. So what we're going to try now is we're going to be deploying in the exact same spot. I'm going to walk into its range, except I'm going to have a smoke sitting down on it. Oops. I used the, uh, used the wrong ability. So we'll just go ahead and go ahead and look at this one real quick. All right. So alarm bot is about the same position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get close to the edge of its range indicator like this. I'm going to throw a smoke on it, and I'm going to walk into its range and see if maybe that affects. It does. You can see it actually blocks the sight from it as well. So what you'll notice here is I'm going to smoke it off. I'm going to get very, very close to it. As soon as the smoke goes down, it's going to deploy, and it's going to make me vulnerable. Yep, just like that. So yeah, jet smoke is another re is a really good reactive tool at blocking a lot of abilities like that. We already sort of knew that, and so let me go ahead and back up a little bit to the left. We're gonna deploy the turret here, and so you can see the range indicator is about th here, about right there. So I'm just barely outside of it. So if I step this way. Let me see how it notices me. And so what'll happen if I Yep, so again, jet smoke actually does block the vision of it as well. To test that again, I'm gonna deploy one here. Fired at my last known location. So I'm gonna have to dash left when it shoots me. You're gonna see deals about twelve damage per burst. I was at twenty seven before, now I'm at fifteen. It's also fairly loud. See, I can hear it from all the way back here. Which makes sense because, uh, you know, turret abilities generally will suffer from having a problem of dealing too much damage, not being noticeable enough, or... Um, you know, having a really high fire, just being too oppressive, basically, you know, damage and uh, damage rate of fire and inability to, like, spot it and counteract it are definitely uh, things that are going to make it oppressive and not fun to play against. Okay, so it is it is shootable as well. One thing we did not test yet is whether or not the alarm bot is shootable, so we're going to go ahead and do that as well, though I assume it is. So you can see, get within the range of it. Yep, it is. So... What we're learning, you know, this is my, my first custom game looking at Killjoy. What we're learning is Nanoswarm, which is her C ability, is definitely something you're going to want to want to deploy and pop right away. It's not something you want to sit because it's just a one-shot kill, and it's pretty loud when you come up on it. Same thing for the Alarm Robot. You want to put it around a corner where if they're going to, um, if they're going to be in range to see it and shoot it, it's probably going to deploy. A good example would be deploying it right here on this corner. You can see if they're going to be doing anything like getting an angle to look at it here, it's going to be able to get them. If they sneak around here, it should be pretty close to the range, if not if not just outside of it, but it's still pretty close. So you're going to want to be putting it on tight corners where the, the bot's going to deploy as soon as they turn it, but they can't really do anything about it because of the sound that it's giving off. Last thing, we're going to deploy uh, Killjoy's ultimate. We're going to see what it looks like on the receiving end as well. I'm actually going to have um, our Killjoy back up a little bit towards spawn. We did this in the first half to see the range indicator of it. We're going to do the same thing to see if there's a range you indicator on the enemy side. Okay, yes, there is. Shows this little cage so you can sort of step out of it, you know, when you're like, oh, no. Looks at, looks at, let's look what it likes, looks like to be detained here. Let's see, it sort of has that indicator in the middle, like if you're getting hit by a brimstone ultimate so you can see i move very slowly that was actually me shift running we're going to deploy it one more time and i'm going to show you how you can't actually use any abilities or anything so i'm going to keep my pistol out as well 
Oh, I didn't even notice the sky effect. That's very cool looking. All right, so I'm gonna be spamming all my abilities. You can see I actually can't do Q, E, C, Here. my ultimate, my jump. I can still do a little bit. You can still do Vi or, uh, Jet's passive float. But yeah, you move significantly slower and you just don't have any, um, don't have any, uh, way to increase your movement speed or like dash out of things. So one of the most, one of the really important things that people, um, are probably going to, ex I expect people to be misusing, uh, Killjoy's ultimate in a way where you can see it takes about 12 seconds to deploy. Maybe it was 15. I'm not, I can't remember exactly. Run. Yeah. So thir okay. 13 seconds it takes to deploy. It's pretty loud. It's really loud when you're in it too. I'm going to duck out of it real quick. Okay, it's a pretty big indicator that just goes around. One of the things I suspect people are going to be doing uh, with Killjoy's ultimate is going to be they're going to stick a plant immediately down and then they're going to pop her ult. They're going to like it takes 45 seconds for the spike to detonate. It takes 13 seconds for Killjoy's ultimate to deploy. Now, what you need to do, and it also takes eight seconds to uh, for the for D for a defuse to happen. So there's um something that you're gonna and it, there's no right way to do this every time. There's gonna be a lot of different ways that you're gonna have to gauge how many um, enemies are gonna be near site, where you're gonna be defend defending from, and a bunch of stuff like that. The thing that I don't think is gonna be a right, and that I th suspect people are gonna get wrong more often than not, is plants gonna go down. 45 second timer is going to begin and then immediately they're going to use killjoy ultimate so what that does is it buys you 13 seconds so we're down to 32 seconds well it takes 13 seconds to deploy so if the enemy team isn't wiping you actually let me go ahead and test whether or not you can um you can defuse while detained one of the things i suspect people are going to do wrong though continuing on that point is they're going to be deploying killjoy's ultimate as soon as um plant goes down what that means is after the 13 seconds, let's assume that the entire enemy team just waits outside of the ultimate range and doesn't actually uh, doesn't actually get hit by it. So after 30 after the 13 seconds, there are 32 seconds left until the bomb is going to deploy, and you have eight seconds uh, that you need to actually deploy it. That just means that you have a you still have a 24 second window to get in there, clear sight, and get the bomb. So what I'm going to like to see, and what I would prefer people to do is you know, hopefully if you're getting plant down that there aren't, there aren't people already on site. What I would do is wait maybe 5 to 10 seconds before deploying Killjoy Alt. That way, the timer is reduced to 19, 14-ish seconds that the enemy team has to get in. I mean, you're cutting their time more than in half just by waiting that 5, 10 seconds. And you're also making it where if they have about 14 seconds left, or, yeah, because... They need the eight to plant so so they, they would really have about 22 seconds but in, subtracting the um subtracting the eight that it takes to plant they'd have about 14. one of the most important things is when you deny them that extra five to ten seconds that a lot like they're going to be spending a lot of the five to ten seconds immediately after plant rotating and getting into position to siege onto and try and defuse the point and if that's overlapping too much with Killjoy's ultimate, what's going to happen is they're just extremely efficient with their time. They're running to the site to get near you and then just waiting outside of it with the, you know, the extra four or five seconds it takes for Killjoy's ultimate to play while not actually getting hit behind it because they weren't just held off behind a wall of any sort. You know, if everyone was sitting directly outside point over here when when uh, Spike went down and then you deployed Killjoy ult immediately, then they'd have to wait to go in because they're already here. But if you deploy it right away, and they're all the way over on A, you know, it takes them 8, 9 seconds to get maybe into this little uh, CT area. When it takes them that long to get there, that's just 8, 9 seconds that Killed Result is not doing anything. It's not deterring them from coming onto the site because they just don't, they were running here anyways. They weren't trying to siege a site immediately. So if you wait 5 to 10 seconds, that is going to be about their rotate time as well. You deploy Killjoy Ultimate. They're afraid to go in because it's going to it's going to be detaining them. Um, at some point though there is a time indicator so like I said there's no one right way to do this but uh, it, it's just so you need to find that middle ground where you obviously don't want to wait till they're all here and then deploy it because then they still have 13 seconds to run in and clear out point as a team 
you want to find that sweet middle spot where there's like five ish seconds left five six six and a half about half of the uh deployment time for killjoy's ultimate left that way if they're not if you know if you're if you're deploying killjoy's ult here and you're hiding here they can't see you it's going to take them a good three seconds to get from here even sprinting You know, you can see that took about four and a half to five seconds. It's going to take them a long time to have to t turn this corner and, and catch you here. So what you need to do is try and get that sweet spot of five to six-ish seconds left so that they're deterred and they're, they're kind of hovering on the outside like, okay, we got to wait these five seconds. We got to wait to make sure that nobody's detained. We can't quite go in. And then if Killjoy's ult goes off and, and nobody is detained, then you've bought yourself that much precious time. You're, you're still hiding around corners, taking defensive positions, making it so that they're significantly more pressed for time than they were before. You know, you've wasted possibly 10, possibly, you know, 30% of of their time that they get to defuse. So the last thing we're going to do after that mini rant about just not deploying your Killjoy ultimate right away is we're going to go ahead and see if, um, while detained, if you can actually defuse spikes. So going against my own advice, I'm actually just going to deploy Killjoy Alt right away. Have her step back. So you can see like right here, if I was on the outside, I'd be like, uh, okay, I need to just wait this out. Yeah, I actually can't even defuse. Interesting. Yeah, so being detained really just completely stops people from being able to uh, do anything. Oh, was that important? So I suppose the takeaway from this would be that needing 8 seconds to defuse and with the uh, 4 second little halfway mark thing that you can you can have this, the, uh, the spikes hit on there's going to be a lot of scenarios where If uh, Killjoy's Detain, or Killjoy's Ultimate, explodes, I think it's a, it would be, at that point, anything less than 11 seconds. So, like, if it deploys at 11 seconds, and the enemy is caught in it, all of them, they aren't going to be able to win. Because they're detained for so long, they don't have the 8 seconds to actually defuse the spike. If it deploys... And they get onto the spike within three seconds while not being detained. They can still defuse it in time. But that means that you're also making it just a three second window for them to have to. Again, let me deploy uh, Killjoy's ultimate directly on the spike. We're going to see exactly what the range is. Here. You should run. So. You can see it's a very big range. It's all even counted out loud. We're, we're going to assume it's a, 11 seconds on the dot when it actually goes off. As you can see, it's about 1, 2, 3. And that was with two jet dashes. So I just barely got here. I was even with both of jet dashes, which, you know, isn't really a thing that you just get two back to back. It's going to be close to impossible to actually um, diffuse a spike if you're nailing it right on the head and getting about 11 seconds left before uh, detonation. So yeah, just don't jump the gun. Use Killjoy's ultimate right away. That's not always going to be right. Sometimes it will be right. If, you, if you're facing a lot of pressure while on point to even get plant down, it might even be right to use Killjoy's ult before actually planting. You know, maybe deploy it, have the enemy try and back out, or something that's really important you have to realize, when you deploy Killjoy's ultimate, the enemies are going to have to make a decision of running out of it with their backs to you most likely or running in and trying to rush everyone down at the same time. It's kind of like when when you deploy with Solva's ultimate, but you're only behind a single wall. If they can just get around that wall, you're, you're pretty much useless because you're standing there with your bow out. You can't really shoot them in reaction. It also gives away your position. Killjoy's ultimate is going to be like, hey, we're on this point. You have 13 seconds to do something or else everyone... All of you guys, the enemy team that's inside of this is going to be detained. A lot of people are going to be like, okay, I need to get out of that. But a, lot, an, a, a separate large amount of people are going to be in the mindset of, okay, I have 13 seconds to get in there, kill everyone. Because 
other after afterwards they're just going to have so much time to be to be set up so you need to be really mindful when you're using killjoy's ultimate a lot of people are going to go aggressive on you a lot of people are going to be defensive on you and you just need to know uh crucially where you suspect the enemy team is and that will help you uh dictate when you should actually deploy your ultimate to make it the most efficient and uh get you the most round wins as well all right, well, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm going to go ahead and splice these videos together so that it's the first and second half uh, type of thing like we've been doing before. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. I read, I read pretty much all the comments that I get. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and like and subscribe for me if you haven't done that already. And have a great day after that.